Welcome back, brewers, distillers, hobbyists, all of you. As always, we're happy to be here and we're happy you're here with us. Now, uh, real quick correction from yesterday when we did the corn popcorn and regular corn mash. Uh, I misstated, and I make mistakes all the time. Um, a one pound is equal to 543 grams. Not what I had stated yesterday, 226, whatever it was. Uh, it's 543 grams. So I got that fixed. Now, on to bigger and better things. If you get an opportunity, now you know, the, are you, first of all, our YouTube channel, subscribe if you get a chance. Look, if you're just a first time viewer, the only benefit we get from this, and it's all a numbers game, and it only really matters to me. Um, and I'm sensitive to that. So if you subscribe, yeah, I get credit. That's, that's all there is to it. Other than that, I get absolutely nothing out of the channel. So give me some, show me some love, show me some credit, and just subscribe. If you subscribe, you'll see a little bell that shows up. It's your option. If you click the bell, you put in your email, and every time I publish a video, you get an update. Uh, but you don't have to do that. It's up to you. All right. Now, on to what we're doing today. Today, we're going to do the fermentation process because I left this here overnight. Hmm. Now, in that process, these two cooled down. I've already transferred them into the buckets. And when I did that, what I did was I used this large screen colander and I placed that over the bucket and I poured all the liquid in there because I like to separate all the grain and all the stuff. You got to take it out anyway at some point. I find no benefit of fermenting on the grain. It's just, I've already taken everything out of it that I wanted, so I get rid of it first, and it makes it so much easier and cleaner and a lot easier to clear. So I separate that. Now, when you do that, though, do there's one additional step, and we call it sparging. Uh, sparging is nothing more than rinsing. So I'll put that colander over top of a bucket with all the grain and everything in it, and I'll get another gallon of warm water, and I'll pour that over that just to rinse all the remaining fermentable sugars out of those grains. Okay, that's all there is to it. All right, so now that I've got everything separated and I've got nothing left here but the corn and the mash and everything that I used, what do you think I'm gonna do with that? Well, you could just toss it, let the birds have it or what. I think I'm just gonna let that set for a while. First, I'm gonna leave it open for a couple of hours and I'll put the lid on it. And you know what that's gonna do? It's gonna make a starter for a sour mash. Ease to it. So I've got these two buckets here and I got just a little bit over four gallons in them because I did the sparge. What I need to do now is bring them up to five gallons. This one cooled down overnight because it was in the metal container. It cooled down pretty rapidly down to about, about 96 or so and I'll need to cool it down about another 10 degrees. I want to bring it down to around 85. Anything below 90 is okay. And then this one didn't cool down. This one is like 110 degrees. So I'm going to use ice because I don't have a whole lot of space to play with. I want these to be equal. Um, so I'm going to use a little bit of ice to cool that down. Uh, just a note, eight pounds of ice is about a gallon. So if you're looking to add a gallon, uh, if you throw eight pounds of ice in there, that'll increase your volume by a gallon or 3.78 liters. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add the ice to this, and I'm going to get these two at the same temperature, and then we're going to come back to you, and I'm going to show you. We'll, we'll go through the fermentation process, or just adding the yeast is actually what we're going to do, pitch yeast. Um, in all fairness to Beard and Board, great job on malting this popcorn. George didn't do a really good job of crushing it. I got probably, I don't know, probably 70% of it crushed, but I've still got a lot of corn kernels here that I just didn't seem to get to. So in all fairness, those 16 gravity points we got out of there versus our 25.6 may be a little skewed because I was started off in a deficit. Uh, I didn't get all of those kernels crushed up real good. So in all fairness, I'm going to call it just about equal. Um, but we'll see. We're, now, we're going to have to add some sugar. We had, of course, we're going to do a little bit of math in just a little while. So, on when we go. Thanks to every one of you who went to, here, genostill.com uh, and checked out those stills. Are those not amazing? Look, if you're interested in those, yes, I'm a distributor, a technical representative, a, a symbol, uh, and a consultant. So, yes, I do offer those. Um, you can get in touch with me directly or you can do it directly through the Geno Still website, Genio, 
and uh, you can get in touch with me. Uh, so I'll be the person you're talking to or in contact with. And if you wind up with one, I may be the person you're standing in front of. Who You never know. That's if you need that type of personal assistance. Now, let's move on. I'm going to add ice, and I'll be right back. All right, we got our calculator out. We got our corn sugar ray. Uh, we got both of our buckets at the same temperature, at the same value level in volume. And here's what we determined. Now, this is just straight, simple, linear math, okay? Okay, our popcorn, the difference between the original gravity and what I was shooting for was 0 0.08. And so, now I know that a pound of sugar, or 543 grams of sugar in a gallon, or 3.78 liters, uh, will raise it 39 gravity points. That's 0 0.039. So, I just divided 0 0.08 by 0 0.039 to tell me how many pounds I needed for one gallon, and that was 2.05. Multiply that, because I got five gallons here, said I needed uh, just about 10 gallons, I mean, about 10 pounds of uh, corn sugar. Now, I did the same thing for the regular corn, because there was only a 0 0.068 difference. Divide the difference by 0 0.039, my anticipated gravity point increase, left me with 1.74 per pound times 5 pounds, oh, right, right around 9 pounds. So I added that, and guess what? They are both now just a little bit above 1.090. They're about 1.094 because I added an extra quarter of a pound in each one just because I just wanted to bring it up above 1.090. So we're going to start from here. Um, I'm going to add my yeast, my yeast nutrient, and the dosage I use for that, this is Fermax yeast nutrient. Oh, it is full of a lot of stuff, diammonium phosphate, other nutrients, minerals. And uh, this just gives my, there's probably enough in there to go right now. But this just gives my yeast a healthy dose of uh, food in order to go through their anaerobic phase, which they needed oxygen for. It poured it back and forth, oxygenated that. Um, and then get into their colony development and uh, their production of alcohol. So here's what I'll do is I use a dosage of two to one. Uh, whatever I use in yeast, I use twice as much in uh, nutrient. And that seems to work extremely well. So I'll, I'll put one, two. Now, while I'm doing this, you may be thinking, um, wow, that's a lot of sugar I had to add to it. Oh, why didn't I just make a, you know, a sugar wash? Well, you got a good point. Um, so here's my recommendation. If you're going to make anything out of a fresh corn or a pulverized, ground-up corn, uh, don't use one pound per gallon because I only use five pounds in each one. I, you're looking at, yeah, I'd probably use you know, 15, 20 pounds of corn, do the conversion, get everything out of that, and then you'll find out then that you're probably only going to have to add, if you add anything at all, you know, maybe a pound or two of sugar just to bring it up to where exactly where you want it to be. Um, and that's all you're going to need to do. So this is just a, this was a test batch. And then I had to add an ex what I would consider an extreme amount of sugar to it uh, just because there's so little grain there to start with. But I got everything out of the grain, about a good 85% anyway of uh, efficiency, uh, with the exception of my popcorn that, uh, my fault. Let's move on. Now that I've done that, uh, I'll pull out my yeast. And I use Distiller's Active Dry Yeast, better known as Daddy, D-A-D-D-Y. Um, now, you, now you, can you or should you uh, hydrate this first and do a yeast starter? You absolutely could. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Pull some of that out, put it in a jar, and watch it start to foam, and then reintroduce it. There's probably times you might want to do that if you're doing a super huge batch of wine or something. Uh, I tend to find that if I just sprinkle it on the top, I mean, I got one big super huge tablespoon here. It's more really it's a soup spoon. Uh, and I just sprinkle this across the top, that that tends to do the very same thing all in one place. Now all the thing that's left to do is to place my lids on with my airlocks and let it go. Now here's what happens. 
your wife may worry about this or she may complain about this because sometimes it smell like ass. And I've said this before. Uh, and if you're doing something off base, it may smell like two asses. Uh, so let's try to keep it down to the one ass level. Um, a lot of times, uh, the fermentation will put off a little bit of an off odor. And that off odor is just, should only be just a stench uh, or nothing at all. Um, and what causes that is if you're fermenting at too high of a temperature. Now, we're starting this at 85 degrees. And we're going to allow it to cool down as it starts to go through its anaerobic phase and get going. Um, we're going to leave this in a room. We're going to control the temperature at about 75. Uh, and if you do that, uh, chances are you may get a little whiff of an off odor or you may get no odor at all. Now, when that temperature starts to go up and you're not controlling it, uh, it'll start to smell like ass. <laughs> and uh, that's perfectly okay. Uh, it'll still run real good. Uh, here's my caution, though, is if you get up in, like, 90 degrees, 95 degrees, and it's fermenting away because it'll take 110 or so to kill it. Uh, and you're up to like 100 degrees. It's going to smell like two asses and you ain't going to like it. Um, that also, that mash is going to have that odor all the way into your still. And it's really hard. It's like a sulfur base. And the, what causes that is the yeast just go absolutely batty and they start to produce other off elements as well as the ethyl alcohol because now you've got an environment that's a little bit rich and too warm for what your yeast colony is designed to operate in. It's as simple as that. So let's keep our houses not smelling like two asses and less than one, okay? And until next time, don't forget to check out geniostill.com. Let us know what you think and I'll be posting a video on a assembly and demonstration sometime here in the very near future. Um, by golly, happy distilling.